Hey, I'm the Gamer, and welcome to Out of the Park Baseball 25. We're going to begin a new Let's Play series with this one. For those unfamiliar with this game, it's it's a baseball management simulator, uh, similar in terms of, like, say, football manager or pro cycling manager, uh, other regulars that I have here on the channel. Uh, historically, for me, I've picked this game up every other year as the new content is takes a couple of years to get enough to to bring it back and as baseball is a little less popular outside of the u.s than it is other than like say japan and korea and most japanese or koreans are not going to be looking for english content regarding that so uh, with a largely u.s based audience it does make it a bit more niche a little bit smaller of a title than some of the other management games that are out there that have a, a bit more of a global appeal. Baseball is a very big game and I absolutely grew up playing baseball. Uh, I competed in my state tournament uh, at youth level. I won the MVP. Uh, it was a co-MVP. There was two of us who were given the award, but I won my league MVP uh, at a key, you know, pivotal year where the leagues are the largest that they are. There's the most players playing, the most teams. Everybody knows that there's one franchise in particular. There's a couple of them in Jeopardy, but there's one in particular in the major leagues that uh, every waking moment could be their last. They have no fan base. They have no support. They have no money. And they're also responsible, or at least the person in the same role as myself now, Billy Bean is responsible for revolutionizing not just baseball, but sports as a whole when it comes to analytical approaches to player signings, aka Moneyball. And we're going to have to play some Moneyball here because that franchise constantly on the verge, folding or leaving the city of Oakland or San Francisco, the Bay Area. Now, of course, it has been announced over the last year that they finally are. They they are finally leaving, and they're headed for Vegas, of all places. I'm not so sure about that one, but um, my doubts over Vegas have slowly, slowly depreciated uh, over the last decade or so. They began with a NASCAR race, and as that's kind of a one-off spectacle tourist type, type thing per year, that one made sense. But now you've got Formula One there. Now you've got a pro hockey team there and their profile has grown in recent years and it makes sense that they feel they can take on more pro football team now uh, residing there so more and more it shows that vegas can handle supporting a professional sports franchise and not just be a gambling slash tourist destination so good on them sucks for the a's but for years, until this sudden announcement about Vegas coming in, for years, Portland has been trying to get a franchise. And back to my side of things here for a second. I might have played a zillion different sports. I coach four actively now, but over the years, I've, I've coached eight, nine sports. Baseball being chief amongst them as a player, chief amongst, and it's, it's my bedrock. So coming back to it's awesome. But growing up in the Portland area, forced to be a Mariners fan. Now, I, I love the Mariners dearly. I, I was a kid in 95 when they made that incredible run. I was a little bit older in 02 when they made that incredible run, but they have yet to win world series so it's one of those painful franchises to be a supporter of to be a fan of but to be three and a half four hours away makes it hard to be a proper fan the distance you have to cover i get to one game every five years for them I'm, that's it because of the distance primarily and i was a big enough fan though that in college I took a particular course that had to do with mapping, graphing, and 
uh, digitally graphing and within this course I had a major project where I actually researched and then presented reasoning why Portland should be the next home of an MLB franchise. At the time, Tampa Bay was most likely to uh, vacate their home with the A's as a secondary choice on, on that possibility. Now, the reality is we're actually looking at expansion once again after 20 years, 30 years, gosh, 30 years now since the last time. Major League Baseball has expanded, and with two potential, one of the top three candidates, and right now probably the second candidate, and it's fluctuated between first and second candidate for a new franchise, is Portland. So we have gone ahead and moved the A's out of Oakland, and we're going to begin our rebuild project still with things very much in a bad way. There's no fan base to start with. There's no personnel. They won just 50 games a year ago. Let's see if we can take the new look Portland Weirdos and build them into a competitive team and eventually a champion. World Series champion, one would hope. Beginning with our goals. Don't suck completely. What a fantastic goal. Well, we do suck completely. We are literally 30th out of 30. Upgrade at second base. It's actually a very low priority goal. I've already seen that part of it, but that one seems actually quite easy to do, and a number of those kind of goals are going to be easy to do because we are literally last in the league at a wide number of positions, or next to last, or next to next to last, for a majority of the positions, uh, meaning... It's going to be tough to to win very many games with this team. Uh, find a top 20 prospect. That is something up our alley, except for we have no trade collateral. What we have right now is lacking in quality, so trading for top prospects is going to be difficult, and our minor league system is right near the bottom. So not only do we lack talent on the major league squad, we lack talent in the farm system. Increasing fan interest should be easy when it's at literal bare minimum. However, it's going to take some wins, and right now we have no method in which to do that. And with the penny pinching, it's going to be rather difficult. They want us to reach the playoffs within five seasons. I actually think that's something that can be accomplished. There are ways, there are methods. And I think we can reach that level. Winning? That's a whole nother thing. And I don't think we're ever going to have a group capable of doing that. But in waves, you can build up, bring up a young group together, develop together, and make a couple moves to get the right pieces in. Hang on to them for just that little window and have that one year where everything comes together get the record, make the playoffs, and then lose all those players because of the expiring and have to you know, trade away and retool and, and go from there. You can see right now that the top farm systems has us ranked 28th, one of just four teams with no talent uh, available. The only good thing about this is that two division rivals are amongst the other three that are down there with us. I'll openly admit, the only baseball team that I know very well these days, because again, the lack of access, certainly the lack of TV access, I, I'll catch a game or two a year on television and a game in person once every five years. With that being said, I hardly know lineups, bar one, the Mariners. I, I know Julio Rodriguez and this lineup. I know this lineup pretty well. New faces? Sure. There's been some changeover. Actually, there's been a fair amount of changeover from last year, but not through free agency, through deals. And those trades have been not necessarily building confidence in where that team's headed. It looks like it's headed back down to uh, being a semi-competitive team and a little bit of a mini rebuild for another run at the playoffs. As a divisional rival, 
we'll see plenty of the Mariners. But that means the A's, the, the laughing stock of the league. Now the weirdos, still the laughing stock of the league. I don't know the first thing about this lineup because the pieces in place are, aren't known quantities. They really aren't. Uh, I wouldn't mind sabotaging this first season very much so to get pieces for coming seasons but with a genuine lack of talent I don't think we have trade capital Uh, we're going to be looking towards free agency a lot picking guys up as much as possible and regurgitating trade packages to build our our farm system uh, and build from the ground up in terms of talent right now, the most potential that we have of the entire Major League roster, the active 26, is our closer. That's not terribly helpful. If you're never in a winning position, what are you going to do with that closer? And even then, we're talking about three and a half stars, current plus potential, 25. In terms of the actual overall, it's the same. And we're talking about a reliever as our next best player. Everybody else is two and a half stars or below by the way there's a new rating system in the game as a whole it's got a 20 to 80 gap now from what it was in previous years however it does have other options and i have picked one of the other options i like the full-blown scale the 1 to 100 scale for both overall and potential uh, is what we're going to be looking at so a 75 is nice but it's not phenomenal by any stretch of the imagination as a 100 is is a distinct possibility down in triple a we certainly have talent that resembles what we have at a higher level and some of it's definitely on the older side and players are ready to come up and potentially contribute but i'm guessing age no actually there's a lot of older players pitchers in particular so getting younger getting younger is a definite target Uh, a lot of these triple a ones aren't necessarily younger either in terms of potential we do have a young left fielder who looks like he could be pretty good but at 23 already he's got a long ways to go to actually be ready to go at double a we have one player one reliever who is fairly good now uh, but in terms of potential there's nothing a plus a little bit of potential young shortstop Big prospect for us, but a long ways off right now. That's still that's a big prospect for us compared to others, but overall, it's nothing. Second baseman, that's a little bit of a prospect, but again, still not much. Adequate level, potentially, is all. Okay, our rookie league definitely has some more options when it comes to that. A lot of young ones. And in our Dominican Rookie League, it's not any better. So we really are are really, really struggling for uh, talented options, even future ones. We're looking at a handful of serviceable pros, backups, uh, somewhere down the road. And we're looking at one player who's starter quality down the road and already at 23 and a long ways from uh, from being at the level you would expect him to be at means we got a long road ahead of us and we have to do it with little to no funds at all times with such a weak roster picking up players from other teams off of waivers is going to be one of our best options uh, for us upcoming free agents None of these guys are making particularly big money, uh, other than maybe Trevor Gott. That's going to make that easy, but (laughs) all of them, signability is going to be difficult. All of them. I definitely have my doubts about this roster, but the one good thing is we at least have consistency. Minimum serviceable players that can kind of hang in the league. They're just not going to do anything extraordinary exceptional it's it's always going to be below average across the board uh, another thing that worries me is that three of our five starters 
are already over the age of 30. And then 28 and 25, I mean, we do have one younger, but lacking potential. Bullpen's definitely a little bit younger. And salary is relatively low for all, but Stripling and Wood, mid-30s, making that kind of salary, I think that's a easy way to uh, flip a couple players. But who's going to want them? Pitching staff looks serviceable. The lineup, not so much. There's no quality. There's not a single three-star player. And there's a lot of two-star only players. Players that where you'd have one or two on the bench on a normal team and not have them see the light of day except for once every couple weeks off the bench. Play a few innings. Never start. We have a team full of them. That's that's going to be a problem. That is going to be a problem. Once again, though, good news here is there's only a third player who's making anything significant in terms of finances. Uh, that's another one we would definitely want to flip almost immediately, if possible. So three players that are making a bit of salary that we would love to offload. We lack talent. Pitching staff's definitely a bit old, but a bit more stable. A lot to do. Combined payroll below fifty million. It's again projected to be that this season. If we can offload those three players, we're definitely saving a lot. Uh, we could cut that down by almost twenty million. Staff payroll is pretty dang low as well. That would free up more money for a scouting budget and a development budget. Right now, I don't want to overcommit to the development when we literally only have one player in the farm system that's worth developing we need to acquire talent draft is going to be really important so scouting budget is going to be uh, at this point more important draft expenditures uh, projected to be quite low but there was definitely some spending last year in that department 20 million looks like this year's budget is down 30 million from what last year's budget was Attendance has always been bad for the A's, but you can really see the impact of COVID and just how bad it was with with it dropping to less than half of what it was pre-COVID. I can see one of the key reasons why we're expected to have a smaller budget. The uh, local media package has decreased by $22 million, down to damn near nothing. But for the moment, we do have roughly $25 million left in budgeting things we can do and if I can clear out two or three of those guys we're freeing up an additional you know 15 to 20 plus million but the market size tiny fan loyalty pathetic fan interest terrible so all of that is uh, looking pretty poor and we're very much in a rebuild mode no surprise that our or Owner is uh, a penny pincher, and all they want is us to achieve a winning record, nothing more. Uh, but those goals that we went over earlier, the very high ones, find a top prospect, build the farm, and improve fan interest. Those are going to be the key focal points. The second base one is one of the only ones that feels achievable in the short term. But a top 20 prospect when right now our best is 96th. First thing I want to do is I do want to invest a little bit more into player development, but we're not going to go crazy with it. We're going to bump it up to 14 uh, million to get it above the baseline at least. Uh, our draft budget probably needs to come up a bit as well, uh, especially if we're going to be first. So ha having some uh, having some money to throw around to, to get some draft picks is going to be important. The big new feature for me this year is the development lab. There's a new development system kind of across the board and the new rating system is part of that uh, going hand in hand. But this development system allows us to fill six spots. We have six players per year, whether on the pro squad, whether down in the farm system, whether it's rookie league, triple A, no matter. Throughout the system, six players are able to get specialized focus and development programs. Our biggest prospect and 
there's a little bit of progress to make across the board. Uh, developing his eye is the only thing that has more than a five point get, uh, gain left to be had. So that's one potential area that one would uh, help him out for sure with on base percentage uh, and pick better pitches to, to get after in the first place. The other batting ratings, though, he's got great speed, great stealing ability, looking like a leadoff caliber hitter. The eye would certainly help with that. Better contact would certainly help uh, with that. Uh, it looks like they've got us after after the window is closed. So we're not going to be able to do anything yet uh, in, gar in regards to our development lab. Well, that makes me very sad. But... Denzel Clark is definitely the player we want to keep an eye on uh, growth-wise. Uh, Max Muncy, I believe, is our double-A guy right now. I've added $5 million to our scouting budget. I've also changed the breakdown a little bit. I've bumped up our amateur scouting a little more. Draft is going to be really important for us, really, really important for us. Uh, international scouting was equal to amateur scouting. I've brought it down quite a bit, and... Uh, applied those points a couple to amateur scouting quite a bit to minor league scouting and a little bit to major league scouting uh, there's not going to be a lot of free agents that we're going to be able to sign at the major league level it's going to be low end guys so I, I get it that we can have a pretty low major league scouting budget and we're not necessarily worried about scouting reports on a game-by-game -game basis over the course of the season as right now anyway we're not looking to win a whole lot uh, so the minor leagues the amateurs that's the big key going forward but the international pool is so much less so much smaller um uh, and so reinvesting that money that two million or so uh into other areas i think is going to really help us out our injured list is all starting pitchers, two star, two star, and two and a half stars, and out for a while, but we'll be back at some point this season. Looking at available free agents, of course, finances are going to be a huge deal for us, but there is talent that's out there, especially when our outfield players are <laughs> uh, lacking. All of them. All of them are lacking. Now, I'm not going to be in the business of, of going for old players. And so, you know, looking at, uh, like, Encarnacion, who's 26 as a possibility, lacking demands, that's somebody we need to scout. So filtering out everybody 30 plus what's left of the potentially two and a half star guys with all easy signing abil signability, low demands. So at this point, it's looking at that scouting accuracy. Are they actually that good? That's the big key now. And so we've got all of the possibly best players. Uh, most of them are outfielders. We've got one first baseman. So if we are going to look at upgrading second base, I need to filter again. Talent for second base definitely drops off and none of them are young, uh, but we'll give a check there. I'm gonna also go ahead and see if there's anything potential wise that we are maybe missing. One important thing to know about this game is that you essentially have three different ways to play. And actually there's more options in depth beyond that you could really customize things and i've tried it before with uh, promotion relegation difficult system to set up the way you want it to unless it's just a couple tiers uh, but for a large multi-tier one it's fairly complicated and takes a long time to set up and then doesn't always function right depending on how it's set up but anyway uh, the three primary ways to play this game is as the general manager or as the manager or playing the role of both uh, for this series as the a's are in total need of a rebuild and historically i don't like getting in to play the actual game very often 
I only do it a handful of times a season and I'm really focused on the squad development and building side of the game. So I go for the general manager only option and our uh, regular season is about to kick off. No changes yet. I am scouting free agents at this time to start building through that method. I have three players that I would love to trade, but with scouting reports so low, I'm going to need information before we get into anything along those lines. So we're going to wait a little while, at least get partway into the season and see just how bad the weirdos are at this point. So it looks like our best uh, talented player down at the AAA level has already been called up and will play left field. Manager has opted to bring him up and it does give us more quality certainly than what we had before. Uh, the Cubs aren't looking... Oh, it's not the Cubs. It's Cleveland. The Guardians. Who we will uh, open the season with. Different C. Totally different C. Winning is not a high priority for me. And uh, the manager is going to take care of all but one thing. I'm going to handle the offensive side of things this time. Uh... And as we are home, it's going to be the defense to start us off. So with a quick half inning behind us, no action in that top half of the inning. Uh, we're going to get our first at-bats of the season. Ruiz leading off for us, just a 55-55. We're not exactly uh, strong at any phase of our offense. But today is going to be an important win for me for this team because or at least for the first handful of innings it might not be Justin but if Bieber is on the mound yeah you gotta take him down so our first batter is gonna ground out about as easy as that one comes We're going to go ahead and take pitch as that first one was a very quick out, but it's also a first pitch strike, so we'll tell him to swing away here. So at least we've looked at things a little bit, and he ends up striking out after we give the order to uh, swing away. And that's a very quick two up, two down to start the season. Okay, we've got a power guy. We'll tell him to swing away. Gets underneath it for an easy pop out, and that's the first inning of the season in the books. We got through the second without any troubles, so it's still scoreless here in the bottom of the second. Uh, Seth Brown now to the plate. This is a high power guy. You don't want to have them taking too many pitches. So for now, uh, we'll give him the command to swing away, and on a full count, he has drawn the walk. So we get our first base runner of the season here in the bottom of the second. Not a high-speed guy, but with a runner on first and nobody out, I think one of our best options right now is we're going to go ahead and bunt horribly. <laughs> Getting a runner in scoring position is going to be one of our best chances to score as and getting two guys to be able to do it. Still can't bunt, and that's now two strike situation. We'll tell him to swing away, and he strikes out. So, uh, big fail. Uh, we're gonna try to go for a hit and run here. And they're watching us close, and this is not a. It's a good contact guy. We're gonna stick with the hit and run. Uh, unfortunately, we foul it off. Take one more shot at it. That's going to go foul. Would have been a good one. Would have been a good one if it had landed just in and got to the corner. We'll go with swing away from here. One and two. Drive it up the middle, and that's a base hit. Our first base hit of the season. And we've got two runners on. But again, because we weren't able to advance, 
we are not able to score. He may have had just enough speed if he was on second to get home with that one. So our failed bunt and then subsequent strikeout really hurt us, hurting us here in this inning. Uh, but just one out. Double play, though. We'll uh, bring that to an end real quick. Boy, that looked way inside. It's called. It was a full count strikeout right there. And now we have two outs. So definitely regular swing away situation. And another strikeout he's gotten out of the inning. No damage done. We get a runner in scoring position for the first time. Not able to do anything with it. Uh, for now, defensively, I'm going with the until runner in scoring position. And they have managed to get one now. They've got their first hit. It was the leadoff runner for the inning, and so they've got a runner on second and nobody out. And we walk the next guy, so at least we've set up a double play situation. Uh, but it's not looking good at the moment. High contact guy. That's going to be an easy out. Oh, no, it's a... Oh, wow. Defensive error already. The opening runs of the season... Uh, or are they only at second and third? No, he scored. They are at second and third. Still nobody out. And a run scores. And how in the world is that not counted as an error? Uh, center fielder completely overran it and it goes over his head. It's terrible. And still nobody out. But this is going to be the first out here. strike out there could we get out of this inning with just the one run we were in all kinds of trouble already a run and two runners in scoring position with nobody out and we have escaped with no more damage dealt to us we're still still in play for this one but runs are always going to be at a premium with such a weak offense little dribbler to the second baseman as a kid, I was able to play second base for a bit, but as a lefty, as you got a bit older, I got moved to the outfield, became a really good center fielder. Uh, it turns out, though, that occasionally, and as I got older and the need arise, uh, found that I got a bit more action play in first base, and even though as a lefty, uh, I had a really, really good stretch for the ball, so I, I played really well at first base but I was a bit short so I'd have to jump to get those high ones and I'd get them but it would take me off off the bag so that was a part-time role for me center field otherwise and always lead off always lead off hitter for years and years and years we got one out and that one's gonna hit him in the back Ruiz gets to first base and that is back to the top of the order by the way Ruiz, our leadoff hitter. And he's got great speed and steal ability. Uh, we're going to... Uh, we're going to run and hit. It's not there, but the steal is... Yes. First steal of the season for Ruiz, and now we have a runner in scoring position. Tell him to swing away from here. Oh, full count. At least we're getting to full count, but this is... That's a lot of strikeouts. A lot of strikeouts already. Just the third inning. Five Ks already. Second time already in just three innings that we've managed to get somebody in scoring position. But second time in just three innings that we've been unable to do anything with it. No trouble in the fourth. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Down one run and in the meat of our order. And we draw a walk. 
we're not at a point in the lineup where a bunt makes much sense. I think we're going to be aiming for power from here. And we are going to drive it fairly deep, but it's going to be a fairly routine play. And no ability to advance from there as it's not quite deep enough. And that's one out. Now we're in a better position for a bunt situation, but now we have an out, so uh, we'll play it normal. We draw a walk, full count, as we pick up that fourth ball. By the way, I'm a big fan of the the new pitch clock, uh, speeding the game up. Uh, it was too slow, even for me. Great game to play. Love baseball. But over the years, it's become just a slog fest watching and uh, it's hard to sit through more than a couple innings so with two runners on and an, uh, one out already big opportunity for us third inning in a row that we've managed to get runners in scoring position this one's going to go all the way to the corner and it's sure to bring in an equalizer we're going to be level here at 1-1 with the double and runners on second and third and still just one out now we're a sack fly away from having the lead in this game that was a big play right there poor play they're gonna make a play at the plate he's out quick throw home he is out so they do stop the run from scoring now it's runners on the corners with two away so we tried to force that one home we didn't make it but that does not drop in what a play from the center fielder the diving catch <sighs> and they stopped the bleeding just as we did each team now one run on the board Gonna bring us to the bottom of the fifth. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I've been doing for them with runners in scoring position, uh, but nothing happens in the fifth. So now onto the sixth, and they have done nothing. No, they have scored. They have scored a run. Uh, there's no runners in scoring position, so that must have been a home run, and it was. Loriano with the home run there, solo shot. It's 2-1 Cleveland, and we are bleeding right now uh, the follow-up to that Naylor has picked up an RBI so that means Ramirez got on it must have been a walk we have a new pitcher on for us as well uh, Brady Basso now on the mound after uh, back to back to back a home run a walk and a double that it's 3-1 and we are in trouble That one's driven hard down the line, but a big diving stop there. Makes it two outs. The runner does not advance. Looks like he was thinking more about getting home instead of advancing. Had a hard one to left center. Not enough in the gap. Easy enough catch, and we get out of the inning, but we give up two runs. 0 for 2 for today. Sends one right back up the middle and just past the second baseman, uh, who was pretty close to center. Uh, I wonder if they've implemented the new rules. I know that the shift is no longer allowed, so I would imagine. And actually, I don't think I remember seeing anything in here tactically about shift. So you can no longer shift in Major League Baseball. Uh, it is going to open things up a little bit more to the hitter that way strike out there. I was thinking about the bunt. Maybe should have gone for it in that scenario. Uh, they were still on the mound and we have not done much to shut him down. We have gotten one run, but it's definitely not enough. He is the best player uh, on the field by far. They don't have much for their offense, uh, but they do have a strong pitcher on the mound and that's not something we have. It's opening day, so it makes sense that their number one guy is going to be better than than their other pitchers but for us we are really lacking uh, we don't have a number one guy we have we have five fifth pitchers
draw a walk on that occasion. So with two outs, we do get a runner into scoring position. Can we capitalize? It would be a nice time to bounce back and at least get one to stay in this game. Nick Allen at the plate. And we have a reliever on the mound. So we have chased Bieber out of the game, but that one lofted to right field for a very easy catch, and we do not capitalize on the opportunity, but at least we chase the pitcher. No damage in the seventh, so we go to the bottom of the seventh, running out of opportunities. We've played two-thirds, and we trail by two. Not enough on that one. Easy enough play, and seventh is done. But a quiet eighth inning gives us another chance. We're only down two runs. It's definitely not bad, but runs are a premium for this team. So getting to three in a night is, I think, a bit of a miracle. We're going to have a lot of one or two run nights. But that dribbler, that's the kind of ball that I would be safe at first easily. <laughs> I would easily be safe at first on that kind of ball, but uh, that was a slow runner, and uh, he did not get there in a hurry and was put out quite easily. That's driven hard in the gap. It's not going to go out, but it's going to bounce to the fence. It's at least going for two. Is he aiming for three? He is. He's going to slide in there safe for a triple, our first of the season. Equal on hits, but definitely not on runs. And stepping to the plate is a player who's had the best night so far. One for two, plus a walk, and he's he got the double, I believe. Tell him to swing away. Ah, uh, slow up the middle. Just out. Very quiet final three innings for Cleveland. Keeps us in the game, but we're still stuck on just that one run, and we have been unable to capitalize on numerous runner and scoring position situations in today's game, uh, which just goes to show what we're dealing with here. Big dive there. Did make the stop. That was a catch. That would have been a nice... Especially with a, if he missed on that dive, that would have gone to the fence, and that would have been a sure double. Would have been a great way to start the inning to put the pressure on. But here in the bottom of the ninth, we are now just one out away from losing our home opener. Back to Ruiz, top of the order. That's driven hard, and it goes over the head of the center fielder. It's going to land in safely, and he does get to second. That pressure is finally on, but it's with two outs already. It's going to take a home run to equalize in one swing of the bat, or it's going to take that hit plus more. Ryan Noda, 0 for 4 today. Uh, we're definitely going to tell him to swing away. Do we want to steal third? I'm going to steal third. <laughs> Am I? Right, no. He's got plenty of pace. I just don't think they're going to anticipate that he's going to steal it. That's through. Are we going to go home and score? Close the gap to one. They are throwing home. No, we do not. So runners on first and third. Well, there goes that opportunity. I think it would have been an easy steal on third as the third baseman really was not covering. Uh, that one runner doesn't matter. It's this runner that matters. Noda does have the capability to steal, but he does not have the speed. I do think they're more likely to want to hold Ryan Noda at first and not give away the steal here, as you know that would be the tying run moving ahead. So we're not going to do anything with him. And play this one out, slow dribbler, that's going to do it. Game done. Not a terrible showing on our first game. We did manage to get seven hits on the day, but we stranded, stranded runners in scoring position again and again and again. All right, folks, well, that's going to do it for this opening episode of the Portland Weirdos and Out of the Park Baseball 25. Uh, 
Please help out with the algorithm regarding this one. I'm planning on this being a two day a week series. And let's see if we can rebuild the Oakland A slash Portland weirdos into a World Series contender. I'm a Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.